run a string of LED lights with no problem at all. It's the utilization. It's what can I do with this energy? Because I've changed it. If you listen to this machine, it's buzzing. Is this, how far is it up now? 28. Okay, 28. So where's the battery? Got 24 volts, where's the battery? 28. No, oh, where's the battery right now? Okay, John. Put the meter across these two and tell me where the battery is. Yeah, just the first two. Thirteen seven. So they're not quite charged. It's gonna take a while. It's gotta push it. But this is gonna push it quicker than what that machine's gonna push it. So now the primary battery's coming up, right? Well, why do you suppose that is? Right, because of the pump. Stray potential. Right. Stray potential. It's because of the pumping action. It's been reported in patents. That when you pump like that, a certain amount is returned to the primary. And those little toys that you buy in the supermarket with the little pendulums that go back and forth like this, right? They say, oh, it's magical in the patent. There are some unknown things. Well, the unknown thing is, is it captures part of the gravity wave. Part of the what? Gravity wave. That's where all the energy comes from. Is the field that's around it. So now, can we build this machine? I bring this stuff, can I pull one of you out of the audience and have you build the machine? <laughs> uh, well, no, we're not talking about that machine. We're talking about this machine. And can I sit there on the bench with you and go over it with you and over it with you until this light bulb turns on? Please. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you, once the light bulb turns on, you'll be looking at more than this. You'll have all kinds of ideas. You will never be free again. <laughs> you will have this little thing hanging on you that will never let go of you. Once you see it. See? It's hard to see it right now because you don't have your hands on it and you, even though you're looking at it with your eyes, it's hard to believe that that's even happening in what John said. But I got one guy here that came up to me during the book signing. I call him the Whipley Schriever man. <laughs> So why don't you tell them what you discovered? What I discovered? Yeah, I want, we want to hear from you. But now I discovered it. Well, you did. You came out there and said, hey, look, I fucked up. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we, um, we built an SSG. And uh, the first time we ran it, and I sat there and stared at the meters, I had that light bulb moment of knowing reality I guess that's how I would describe it. Yeah. As opposed to, it's a theoretical construct, someone's trying to tell me something I need to understand, or I need to believe something, or any of that. Yeah, because we had, we, in our particular case, we had uh, a load running off the, the charging battery, um, and once it adjusted to that load, it just sat there. 
and we were running 350 watts, uh, about um, 400 milliamps of load, a lamp, a laptop, a bunch of other stuff. And I just, like I said, there was that, just that moment where I got chills, because I knew unequivocally that this is what was going on. I didn't understand all of the mechanisms of the spike and all the rest of it, but another level, I didn't really care. I just saw what was going on, and the meters were not going down, and it was a beautiful thing. And I actually called John's house, because I got his phone number, and left the voicemail, and just said, thank you. <laughs> you really did. And, uh, I know that feeling. I went in 40 years ago. I saw that. And when I saw the first machine that actually back popped the batteries, that's a good snake oil salesman, isn't it? <laughs> when, I, when I first seen that, and I, I called up Tom Bearden and I said, Tom, the battery's recharging itself. That's right. He said, that's right, Tom. <laughs> Now are you going to write the little book? Well, yeah, I did my best. I wrote the little book. I tried to make it as simple as possible. I didn't try to go up with some language barrier, you know. Then I tried to make it as simple as possible because I wanted people just to goof around with it. But the problem was everybody changed it. They changed the SG circuit all the time. They say, well, I know better. I'm going to draw all this current on the primary, and then, of course, the secondary is going to charge. Well, yeah, for a little bit, till this device pops. Do you remember the idea is to keep things cold? If you keep things cold, where's your efficiency? Your, your efficiency increases, right? So I always, whenever somebody does a machine and they bring a machine to me, I always walk up to the machine and I feel the coils, I feel the cores, like this. If I get one of you that doesn't want to stick their finger in there, like you, <laughs> and I say feel the coil, yeah. drawing 10 you can get you a sample have some heat, right? There is no heat. And all the heat being developed is because the damn transistor is so slow, it can't switch. It wants to switch faster. But it can't do it. It's got some capacitance problems involved in it. Okay, and you can't use the RF transistor in here because it would just pop. So we're stuck with the audio transistor since it's a rugged device. In other words, when you build audio amplifiers for all those years, you learn one day that it's the SOA curve. It's important, can your amplifier cut one amp at DC? If it can cut one amp at DC, you have a good device and the amplifier is going out there in the field and it's not going to fail right away. Until the guy decides, well, I got a set of speakers on here, I think I'll pile more on. Then you exceed the curve and the engineer says to himself, I'm going to current limit you. Now you got an amplifier.